In this series of Learning from the Masters, the French comic artist Yves Chalon. Welcome to Steve Draws. One of my favorite French comic artists is Yves Chalon. He made comics like Bob Fish, Le Jeune Albert, and Freddy Lombard. He published his comics in the 1980s, but his style was inspired by the comics from the 50s. Together with comic artists like Joost Zwarte, Flock, and Serge Claire, he developed the atomic style. To bring back the Frank Belgium comics like Spirou and Tintin, also known as the Lean Claire. Yves Chalon was born in 1957 in France, Lyon. He started drawing at a very young age. And when he was 17, he published his first comics. He studied at the Ecole des Beaux-Arts in Saint-Étienne. During that time, he published his own magazine, L'Unité de Valeur, in 1976 with Luc Cornelion. Two years later, he started working for the French comics magazine, Metal Hurlant. The magazine was founded by Möbius and other artists in 1975, and Two years later, the English edition Heavy Metal saw the light of day. During that time, Chalon made pastiches of 50s comics. The comics were collected in the book Cap Divan. In these comics, you can see the development of Chalon's style. He moved to Paris and worked on new comics for Metal Hurlant. In 1981, he published Bob Fish, about a detective in Brussels. The comics were drawn in a 50s style. The book was published in two colors, black and red. With the use of halftones or bandai dots, it enhanced the retro style. In the same year, Le Testament de Godroy de Bouillon was published in the series of The Adventures of Freddy Lombard. The book was originally published in two colors. In that same year, Charlon started working on the comics of Spirou, his longtime dream. The comics were two tiers and were published in the weekly comics magazine Spirou. In 1983, Adolphus Clare was published, a science fiction comic about Adolphus, who lives on the moon. The comic had four small stories and they were first published in Metal Hurlant. At this time, Yves Chalant was a well-respected artist and he gathered a lot of fans in France, Belgium and the Netherlands. The Dutch weekly comics magazine Epo asked him to make a new adventure of Freddy Lombard. The story, at Oli van de Kerkhof, was pre-published in Epo magazine. In 1984, this story was published in France as Le Cimetière des Elephants, The Elephant Cemetery. In 1985, a spin-off character from Bob Fish got his own series, Le Jeune Albert, about a scamp character living in the Marolles, a working-class area of Brussels. The first edition was also printed in two colors. In 1985, the third book in the series, The Adventures of Freddy Lombard, was published, Le Comète de Carthage. At this time, Chalon gradually changed his style in an even more graphic manner. In 1987, the book John Bravo was published. There were a collection of the stories he drew in 1980 for Metal Hurlant. Two more books were published in the series of The Adventures of Freddy Lombard. Vacances à Budapest in 1988 and F-52 in 1989. He still worked on a new story for Spirou, but the publisher of the magazine didn't want to publish it. He reused some of the art in the comic F-52. Apart from his comics, he also made a lot of illustrations for advertisements. He also got interested in screen printing and made several screen prints in limited editions. On July 18, 1990, Yves Chalon died in a car accident at the age of 33. His widow, who is a colorist, continued his legacy and a lot of books were published after his death. 
The only books that were published in English are these two anthologies of the adventures of Freddy Lombard. To this day, Yves Chalon is a big inspiration to comic artists and illustrators, and his books and silk prints are in high demand. To get a better understanding of the style of Yves Chalon, I have this book, which has a lot of the original art, which is called Yves Chalon, Un Vie en Dessin. And it's a great book, and it has a lot of magnifications of his work. And it takes all of the sketches and also the original uh, comics he, uh, he drew. And here is Yves Chalon in Brussels, the city he really uh, loved very much, but he was French. And here he is with his uh, wife, Isabelle Beaumonet Jaune. And here you can see his early work. This was done in 1971. He got his inspiration from the Belgium uh, comic artist. Um, and in France, they looked down upon uh, the Belgium comics. So when he started out, um, he really wanted to pay homage to the French comics. So you see all of this early work they were all inspired by the Belgium comic artists. And this was the first comic he published, and it was a magazine. And here's some of his early work. And at Metal Erlon, they took notice of him of because he published uh, this his magazine himself and then he was accepted into Metal uh, Hurlant and there he started to do pastiches or parodies on uh, well-known comic artists and this looks a lot like Mobius and here you can see himself how you can draw yourself this is from 1977 so he gradually developed his style and here is here he is together with uh, another comic artist called Luc Cornelion and with him he uh, made some comics and that was uh, published in Captivant. One of his big inspirations also was uh, Will Eisner so he did a, a parody page on uh, the spirit and it's called Will Scanner. And his style, you know, is uh, very based on the Belgium comics and he took his own twist at that style because when you look at his ink work, he uses very thick lines to ink, but it's still very graphic. And there's a nice page. And you know, you really can see the very graphic approach to uh, doing the comics. It's a little bit of a mix of Spirou and Tintin. He also made a lot of uh, illustrations, and this was for a cover for Metal Hurlant. And he continued working uh, for Metal Erlang, so he did a lot of parodies, and this is a parody on uh, a Mobius comic. And gradually he changed his style, because he also did a lot of illustration work uh, for advertisements. And he also worked in gouache. And he also used a lot of bende dots because he, you know, liked the old style from the 30s and that's where they used the, the bende dots a lot or the halftone screens, you know, to uh, get some grays into your comics. Some beautiful gouaches for 
an agenda, a cover for an agenda. Well, this uh, book is not chronologically put together because this is from 1981 and that was for uh, Metal Erlon and here you see that he uh, draws in different styles. This is from 1983 and you can see his line art and this is from 1982. This is more cartoony and you know after that he changed his style uh, to um, uh, a more graphic style because this is in 1988 and the characters aren't that, that cartoony anymore. So this is from 1983 and you can see the very thick and thin lines he uses in his inks. Here's a nice magnification of uh, the illustration. You can also see that he's using uh, blue pencils because they don't uh, register when you scan uh, the page. And these illustrations were all done on one piece of paper, so he also used airbrush. And uh, I think this is done with uh, colored inks. So it's always great, you know, to see books like this with uh, the real pages, and you know, you can see. Um, how he build up his his pages because here you can see some white out because he made a mistake here in his inks and then they uh, used white gouache or uh, some other uh, paint to paint over it so he has a very distinctive style it's reminiscent of Tintin but you know when you see a page done by him you can immediately see that it's Yves Chalon here are some great pages of uh, Freddy Lombar. This is my favorite comic. Whenever I uh, think of rain, I always uh, think of, of these pages. This is an uh, interesting original. It's from uh, a silkscreen print I have. Um, I have one who he gave to a friend of his and I bought it from uh, the friend of Ishalan. And here you can see how he just cut out a piece of uh, the original because he probably made a mistake in uh, inking uh, the character so he cut it out and replaced it with a new piece of paper. But when you see the final uh, result, you know, it looks perfect. So here you see the sketch and this is uh, a Christmas card he did. This is a design of Le Jeune Albert. And this is the cover of Le Jeune Albert. But you can also see that he's using uh, non-repro blue pencils. And also the bende dots or the half tones. And, you know, this is my favorite period because he, it's a little bit more cartoony. He really uses these fat lines to ink. And here are some uh, illustrations for Spirou. And here are the originals. And just look at this, you know, action and the line he, the action line he uses. And it's also an exaggeration of, of the limbs because in reality, you would break your uh, your leg if you do it like that. And just look at this illustration, you know. He has a great sense of uh, design and also his uh, layouts are very well put together. And also the use of black and white. 
It's also reminiscent of uh, the spirit. And here you can see the change in style. Because this was done in 1983. And here you see a page from 1986. And the characters are a little bit uh, more uh, realistic. So Yves Chalant is still an inspiration to me because uh, when I started out as a comic artist, uh, you can see his influence in uh, how I drew at that time. I'm just going to show you some of the originals for a comic I did for KLM Airlines. And it's a little bit in the same style. These are some pages I did and they're really inspired by Yves Chalon and I think this is done in 1983 so I was 15 years old. Never used it but... And later on I did some comics for KLM uh, Airlines and this was done in 90, 1996. And they're, you know, really inspired by uh, Yves Chalon. And it's a very atomic style like uh, comic. And I used to draw it even bigger. It was the time when I was still working uh, on paper and now I do everything in Procreate. But, you know, it's the same principle. You do the sketches and then you ink it and then you color it or use halftones. This is a sketch of Bob Fish, Yves Chalon never finished. And I'm now inking it in Procreate uh, using my Stave Yves Chalon ink. It's a brush that's part of Stave Comic Inks. It's a brush set with 18 brushes, so you can ink in different styles. And I added this brush to it, so if you already uh, bought the brush set on Gumroad, the update is for free, and you get a notification that there's a new brush. It's available for a 25% discount, when you use the promo code STAVE25, then you get 25% discount on the brush set. It's available until the end of October. So if you really want a nice brush set with uh, a lot of different comic inks, then you can buy it on Gumroad. And I'll leave a link below this video. The sketch I took of a book, which is called Le Inachev, and it was published in 1993. And in this book, it shows um, a lot of his sketches for a new Bob Fish story he never finished. And he did several iterations, so you can see sketches. And he changed his style uh, in 1984. It became a little bit more realistic. And Here's the page uh, I'm now uh, inking. And first I need to do some research on, because the sketch wasn't really finished. So I looked up uh, cafes from the 1950s and you know what the interior would look like. So I searched some pictures on Google on uh, cafes from Brussels and use them, you know, to finish the sketch and then ink over it. The best way to learn from uh, an artist is to either uh, copy their style or just ink the sketch like I'm doing right now. Here are some uh, changes I've made in the sketch and in the fifth panel, there's a, a photographer who's using uh, 
a camera from the 1950s. So I looked it up, you know, a press camera, and used it to finish the sketch, because they did have different kind of cameras in that era. And it just shows how much documentation Yves Chalon would have, you know, to draw in that style. So everything to the, what everyone is wearing and the backgrounds and the interior, it all seems really from that era. And he made a lot of different uh, sketches to uh, start the story because he had some uh, different starts of the story. And here's the ink I did, and I just finished it with the Steve Yves Chalon ink. And I copied this uh, to a new Procreate file because I also wanted to color it in the style of Yves Chalon because the Bob Fish comics were initially published uh, in two colors, so red and, um, and black. And he used half tones to have pink and also gray. And I made the half tones in Procreate. So the half tone is on a separate layer and then I made a mask. And I'm just painting in a mask using the reference layer in, uh, in the inks. So most of the time you just can drop the half tones And here is a coat and it uses two half tones. So it's a half tone of red and a half tone of gray. And the half tones need to be in a different angle, otherwise you get a moiré effect. So I'm first doing the black half tones, which will have the gray part and then underneath it is the red and it's at, on a different level. Most of the time uh, it's in a 30% degree. When you put a gray half tone on top of a red half tone, you get more of a brown feel to it. So I'm using that same principle. And in that time it was the 1930s, they used to print in two colors, you know, just to save money because full color printing was very expensive. And I'm just dropping in the colors using the reference layer. You're very limited in, in your coloring, but that also makes it quite interesting, you know, what you can do with two colors. I also have a separate layer for uh, pure red. And I'm using the same red as the red of the half tones. And now, you know, you can print everything uh, digital. So it's a four color process. So I'm just using the masks and I'm using black to uh, erase some of the parts and white to paint in the half tones that are under the mask. And sometimes the inks are a little bit open, so I'm just painting the half tones.
And here's the pure red I'm using because the car of Bubfish is red in other stories as well. So I'm just dropping in the colors. And red is of course a very strong color. So when he made this panel, everyone looks at the car. So it's a very good layout as well. And there's a lot of happening in uh, just a, I think it's a, a splash panel. And I'm just doing some touch-ups with just painting in uh, the colors. And sometimes, you know, the lines are open so that you, you cannot fill in. So I'm just changing the inks just to close the gaps so I can fill in the pure red. At that time, they would just uh, make separate sheets. So one for black, and uh, there they would use the half tone and just cut them out. So this is the same principle, actually. You know, you're using masks to mask it out, and they would cut out a, a total sheet. They would lay a sheet of half tones on top of the original, and then do the half tones and for the red part they used a light table and just do them in black so they really didn't know you know what it would look like and these separate files would be sent to printer and they would separate the the files into black ink and the red ink And he did this in 1984, so no one uh, used the halftones anymore because it was really uh, a thing of the 50s from 1930 until the 1950s. And it creates this retro feel to, to his comics. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you want me to do more videos like this in learning from the masters, please let me know in the comments down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell because each time I upload a new video, you get a notification. Drawing is fun and practice makes perfect. See you next time. Doodles!